Hi everyone. Today we released our financial results for the half year ended December 31, 2021. During the half, we achieved some significant milestones as we continue to reshape our portfolio for a low carbon future. Before I talk more to these changes, I'd like to thank our teams around the world who have continued to work incredibly hard delivering a strong set of results during the half. The most important commitment we make at South 32 is that everyone goes home safe and well at the end of every shift. And during the half, we didn't achieve that. In November, we tragically lost one of our colleagues, Mr. Desmond Menez, a contractor with Electra Mining, who was fatally injured while undertaking electrical work at our vessel's mine at South African Manganese. My deepest sympathies are with Mr. Menna's family, friends and colleagues, and we have provided them with our support. We undertook a detailed investigation to understand what happened, and we are sharing these learnings across our business. Our current safety performance is not where it needs to be, and during the period, we initiated the safety system of work. This is a multi-year program designed to achieve a step change in our safety performance. In the first phase of the program, we have partnered with a leading safety consultant to undertake diagnostic work across the business and identify areas for improvement. COVID-19 continues to have an impact across our operations and supply chains. During the half, we have seen periods of elevated case numbers and restrictions in most of the jurisdictions where we operate. We continue to focus on keeping our people safe and well maintaining safe operations and supporting our communities. Moving now to our operating and financial results. We achieved a record operating margin of 44% and a significant increase in our underlying earnings to just over 1 billion US dollars and a half, benefiting from a broad recovery in commodity prices and the divestment of lower margin businesses in energy coal and manganese alloys. We maintained our focus on operating performance, holding the increase in controllable costs to less than 3% of our total cost base, despite significant inflationary headwinds. We delivered quarterly production records at Brazil Alumina and South African Manganese during the period, and at Worsley Alumina, we continue to operate above nameplate capacity. At Cannington, we revised production guidance 5% higher as we prepare to transition to 100% truck haulage in the June 2022 quarter, bringing higher grade material forward in the mine plan. We also achieved a 26% increase in payable nickel at Ceramatosa following the completion of the furnace refurbishment and higher grades being processed from the QMP project. We have, however, revised FY22 production guidance lower for Illawarra metallurgical coal and Australian manganese which reflects the ongoing impacts of COVID-19. During the half, we generated a substantial improvement in free cash flow from operations, including distributions for our manganese business to 942 million US dollars, despite a US $333 million build in working capital caused by logistics congestion and rising commodity prices, predominantly in our aluminium value chain. We also delivered a very strong return on invested capital of 25% and we finished the December with net cash of 975 million US dollars, which increased to 1.1 billion US dollars by the end of January. This strong financial position has allowed us to invest in our business, making acquisitions in copper and green aluminium that increase our exposure to the metals critical for a low carbon future and increase returns to shareholders. The board has resolved to pay a record US $405 million fully franked ordinary dividend in respect of the period and expand our capital management program by US $110 million to US $2.1 billion, leaving US $302 million to be returned by September. We have made significant progress reshaping our portfolio with the divestments of South African Energy Coal, Temco and Metalloys which is expected to sustainably lift the group's operating margin into the future. We are also adding copper to our portfolio through the acquisition of a 45% stake in the Cerro Gorda joint venture in Chile, which is expected to close in February. 
During the half, we announced an agreement to acquire an additional shareholding in Moselle Aluminium of at least 16.6% and agreed to participate in the restart of the Brazil Aluminium Smelter using renewable energy. We also reached a conditional agreement to acquire an additional 18.2% interest in the MRM bauxite mine in Brazil, which would take our ownership to 33%. In January, we completed a pre-feasibility study for the Taylor deposit, confirming its potential to be the first development option at our Hermosa project in Arizona. Study results showed it has the potential to be a sustainable and highly productive underground mine in the first quartile of the industry's cost curve. Beyond Taylor, we have completed a scoping study for the Clark deposit, which has the potential to underpin a second stage of development at Hermosa, producing a battery grade manganese product. We have commenced a pre-feasibility study at Clark and are reviewing the potential to pursue an integrated development with Taylor. In addition to Taylor and Clark, Hermosa also has a highly prospective land package which includes the copper and polymetallic peak exploration target as well as the flux prospect. We intend to undertake further drilling at both targets in the coming year. Along with the exploration programs at our Ambler Metals Joint Venture in Alaska and across our pipeline and greenfield exploration programs. Looking ahead, we are well placed to continue our strong performance of the past six months. Our teams remain focused on delivering safe, stable production from our existing operations and realising value from the improvements we have made to our portfolio, positioning us well to benefit from the transition to a low carbon world that is underway. Thank you.